Hi and welcome back to a new video, another week lock. It's now Monday evening, it's going to be a week where a lot of things will be happening here in my production hall and you can see also looking at like all those foils <laughs> which we attached to the walls and like in the center of the room. Some things are going to happen. Just going to enter this like tiny separate room which we just created right here. That's actually in the middle of our production hall and uh, you can see there's a marking on the floor like just going all around here. It's about 15 square meters roughly. And you can also see a hole in the ground where we did a test drill to analyze the floor, which turned out to be a disaster. So the thing is we want to have a five axis CNC mill, like a high end one arriving by the end of the year or like early next year right now. Delivery time is about eight months, so could be delayed a bit. But the thing is, this machine is going to be extremely heavy, like above seven tons. And when we did the test drill, we figured out that the floor has a height of like seven centimeters. Yeah. And you have to keep in mind, it's not only the seven tons, but also you have some kind of dynamic load. So when the arm of the CNC is moving like rapidly and stopping rapidly, you also have some like dynamic loads uh, beside the static load. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. That's why we have to change the I guess base, foundation, something like this, like we have to change the floor. So they're going to cut this piece out right here with about 15 square meters, as I said before, and then have some new steel in there and then fill it up with concrete with a height of about 30 centimeters. And then hopefully everything will work out for a new machine. <laughs> going to be really exciting because that's more like a, that's like a childhood dream for me to own a machine like this because you can do so many different things. There's like unlimited things you can do on a like mechanical level, especially for like border block productions and things. And talking about machines, there's actually, there's actually another machine which we can somehow look at. So our machines, as you can see, are not doing anything right now. That's our Daytron M8 and it's completely like also sealed off and that's the main reason why we did that is because of all the dust that could somehow go into this room when they're cutting the floor and taking out all the old concrete and stuff you always have a lot of dust building up and that like very fine dust is something you do not want to have inside your machines like if it goes somewhere into some bearings or whatever because the machine if it's not running it doesn't have like the air pressure protection because that's what you have on those like CNC mills. If they're running, then it's not an issue, but we cannot have it running because obviously if they're working with some like, I don't know, heavy drills and stuff and saws, then you have a lot of like vibration in the floor. And that's a condition you don't want to have running for a CNC mill. And that's the new machine, which you have right here. Actually didn't even have the time to open it because it was just delivered like two days ago. And when they delivered it, yeah, obviously didn't make much sense to unpack it and then pack it again a day later. But I think the work here should only take like maybe two or three days, best case. We never know if we find something underneath the old concrete, but we are hoping for the best that nothing is underneath there. And then hopefully actually in, within this video, we will be able to unbox this one. There's a bit of a mess in our assembly room right now, simply because we had to move a lot of parts in this one to protect it also from dust. Also the laser cutter had to be moved in here. Also because I needed some additional parts for a different video I'm working on right now because I want to use a 5800X 3D with an old CPU cooler which does not have an AM4 mounting. And then I just uh, did this quickly, like a new mounting plate. I'm not sure what exactly I did wrong. It looks somehow off, like not symmetrically. I'm not sure what went wrong, but I hope it will fit, but I have to check that when I'm back at home with an AM4 motherboard. There's definitely a good amount of... It just looks like sand. They took out from the ground and uh, considering how thin the concrete was originally, I think it was a good idea to upgrade our floor. It's now Saturday, by the way, and they also meanwhile delivered all the steel that will be put into the ground to like enforce the ground. And they also already prepared basically the first layer. So they put some like sand on the floor, then some foil above it, and then some first layer of concrete. Now this has to harden like two or three days. And after that, they will put on the steel. And then a few days later, they will completely fill it up with concrete. But if we just look over here, um, if you just pay attention to the edge, like where they cut, cut out the old concrete, you can see like this is already sand. 
And in between here, maybe like this is three centimeters and maybe this is like four or five, but there was also like no steel in here to uh, like to reinforce it. So yeah, I think putting a machine on here that weighs like seven tons would not have ended well. The good thing also about Saturday is that nobody's here to work. So it's a bit more quiet, a bit easier to film some parts, but we're still in between of the production of our contact frames. That is one batch that still has to be like sandblasted. You can see it's just the raw aluminum. And um, apart from these, we still have a huge amount that is still like 50% done. So for example, that is one of these big aluminum sheets, which we use for production of them. They're only like 50% done. But we're working on that and I can tell you that at least for Europe, Case King has a good amount of stock and we're just spreading it to different shops right now and like also globally we shipped some to the US to some stores. So they should have availability also in the US pretty soon. I actually first expected these construction workers to take a bit longer but they were a lot quicker. That's why we also dismantled already our like dust protection wall and this gives us the opportunity to also unpack our new machine. Even though this might look like a CNC, like a CNC mill, it kind of is, but it also kind of is not. I actually didn't even know that machines like this exist in, in this form or shape until like half a year ago, or like a year ago. It will remind you of a CNC though, because the general shape is pretty much the same as a three axis machine. It can go in the Y axis, X axis and Z axis, but you can also read this is called a dispenser. What sets it apart from a normal CNC mill is the thing in the center, which is called the dispenser. It's not a spindle, like where you have your, I don't know, your tool for CNC milling. But in here, you can have like a cartridge, which can be filled with all kinds of glues or like sealant materials. And then there is this um, like very special precise pump on the bottom that can dispense these kinds of liquids you would try to use. But I think at this point it might be easier that we just insert some footage from Daytron that kind of shows what this machine is capable of. You probably already got an idea now after seeing this footage why I decided to buy this machine. And the reason is pretty simple. We will try to use this for all kind of like water cooling components. Like let's say I want to make a water cooling prototype like one out of one piece. Then it is so much easier to have a machine like this which directly dispenses your basically o-ring on there. It also gives you huge design freedom of choice which means that if you just work with o-rings you're always limited to the fact that it's in the end one circle. It's like one closed loop. But with this machine, we could do like T joints or like X joints. We can have like all types of uh, forms. We can do uh, light, like 90 degree angles. We're not limited to any kind of radius. And if we just want to produce a single cooler, for example, for a certain video or whatever, then we just put the part underneath here and we can have the sealant ready. We don't have to order like 10,000 pieces of O-rings because typically if you need a very specific shape or like very specific dimension, you cannot just order a single O-ring. You probably have to order like a thousand or something depending on the MOQ. And yeah, that's why I decided to purchase this machine. It wasn't cheap, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be worth it. The dispenser thing is also some kind of like trial and error approach because like glues and some kind of sealant fluids, they are pretty difficult to work with. So we had to test this over several months before we were sure that we were actually going to purchase the machine. So that is one example. First of all, don't worry about the color. We just took any kind of material. They can come in all sorts of colors. So we just took a red one for testing, but that's how it could look like. Here you can also see like the technical advantage you can have over just using o-rings because you can have like two chambers directly next to each others and the material like this would be an example of a very tiny distro plate and you can easily take this distro plate apart this like o-ring is only sticking to one side while you can easily clean it so it doesn't 
glue this thing together, it's only sticking on one side. And if you think about maintenance of like a water block, of like a distro plate, then if you take this apart, because it will always stick to one side, cleaning is really easy. You don't have to worry about the o-ring kind of falling apart or something or like falling out of the piece, which can be, then be really like a pain in the ass to put it back in. All this would not happen with this approach, so yeah. Will be a lot of work to get this for like serial production, but we're working on it. As you can see, the mounting plate fitted exactly as intended. I think I did some measurement wrong, like by one degree on one of these arms. That's why it doesn't look like 100% accurate, like symmetrically, but still worked out fine. The video with this and the 5800X 3D will come on next Wednesday. By the way, Makita is enjoying her time here, so everything is all right. She's getting along with uh, Sheik very well. Okay, thanks for tuning in and uh, thanks for watching this video. See you next time and bye-bye.